and it is good. And Orange appears to have tucked this danger away very quickly. The Panthers have now scored on four consecutive plays, four consecutive drives. They put up three touchdowns here in a span of six minutes and 37 seconds in the second quarter, and it is Orange now leading 28-3 on HillsboroughSports.com. Stay with us for more. The Deer Pushers Association of America is a group dedicated to raise funds in support of educational programs, wildlife habitat enhancement, and acquisition, and the preservation of the shooting sports and hunting tradition for future generations. They serve Northern Orange, Southern Person, and all of Central North Carolina. To learn more about the Deer Pushers Association of America, contact Skinny Laws or Seth King directly. The Deer Pushers Association of America, Killing tomorrow's trophies today. And a squid kick that's fallen over by Cedar Ridge at the 32-yard line. So Orange using big plays, and we thought that this was going to game, going to be a game of three yards in a cloud of dust and steady gains, and whoever would have the most long, consistent drives would wind up winning, but. After a first quarter that certainly indicated that, Orange has come up with three huge plays here in the second quarter to burst out to a 28-3 lead. The ball is at the Cedar Ridge 32. Panther defense will go to work now. See if they can stop this offense. Berger will flip the option out to Miles. Past the 35, and Miles threatened to break one open, but he was just hit by Eli Haithcock, who came up with potentially a touchdown-saving tackle, and as it was, Miles didn't even get the first down. Wound up with a gain of seven. Good option pitch. First time we've seen that wrinkle from the Red Wolves offense tonight. And it's second down and three. If you just joined us, Orange scored on its opening drive. Peyton Wilson scored on a runaround right tackle. The extra point was missed. That made it 6 nothing. Cedar Ridge came right back and got a field goal. Fake toss. Burgo will hand it off. Saunders turning up the middle, and he's got a first down. Good fake that time, and Saunders rushes forward. Runs hard for five. Out to the 44. It'll be first down and 10. London Saunders in his final Orange Cedar Ridge game. He's rushed for 490 yards this season and nine touchdowns. Shamar Miles has rushed for 294 yards. Saunders has the only 100-yard rushing game this year by a Cedar Ridge player. That came in victory by Cedar Ridge over East Chapel Hill, 47-6. First down for Cedar Ridge after the five-yard pickup by Saunders. And Berger fakes the toss. He'll roll right, takes a peek down the field, pump fakes, now launches it down and is intercepted by Eli Haithcock at the 35, and Haithcock will go down. Eli Haithcock with his second interception this season. We've got a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Orange's defense is going off the field, though. They sense that's going to be a hold against Cedar Ridge or an ineligible man downfield again, and that is the call. An eligible man. So, second interception tonight thrown by Phil Berger. Eli Haithcock comes up. The latest starter for the Orange defense. He took a spot in the free safety, and he revolves between safety and linebacker. And here, Orange takes the ball back at the 36. And Orange, for once, now in positive territory and turnovers in this game. It's one of the few times that's been the case all year. Ball back the 36 of Orange. Jackson Schmidt will take the ball back after the turnover out of the I formation with three wide receivers. Jalen Jones in as a slot man. Witted and Evans also back there. Play fake. And now a throw by Schmidt deep down the field. He's looking for Jones. And it's caught at the 25. Out to the 20 and down at the 15. Got a flag down at line of scrimmage, however. Let's see what we have. And an eligible man downfield called against Orange. Turnabout being fair play. And that's going to wipe out a long gator, which turned the ball deep into Cedar Ridge territory all the way back at the 18. It's hard to remember that Cedar Ridge really had some momentum going into this quarter. They had just held Orange. They had just picked off a pass. 
to shut down the only drive so far in this game that hasn't ended in a touchdown. At that point, Cedar Ridge was only down three, and they had the ball. But then the first play of the second quarter, Peyton Wilson picked off a Phil Berger pass, returned it 46 yards for a touchdown, and ever since then it's been an uphill battle for the Red Wolves. So now it's first and 15, ball back at the 31. It'll be a toss. Beasley starts to the right, but there are black shirts waiting on him, and he goes down for a loss. Fine defensive play right there by Aiden Poole, along with Ryder Twilla, as they beat the orange pursuit to the outside, and Beasley goes down for a one-yard loss. So now it's second and 16. With Orange leading 28-3. Five-yard mark off. Wiped away a huge game. Jalen Jones has seen more time now as a wide receiver. Now Orange puts in another new wide receiver. That's Peyton Wilson in there out of the I formation. Wilson is lined up as a slot man. On second and 16, there'll be a handoff running to the right. Up the middle goes Morgan Paschal. He runs up the gut to about the 32. And now we've got a timeout call by Cedar Ridge. So timeout on the field. And the score is Orange leading 28-3. You're listening to HillsboroughSports.com. Stay with us. Where did you say we're going after church today? Oh, Jay's Chicken Shack on North Churton Street in Hillsboro. What's there? Oh, they have deep pressure fried chicken. It's a delicious recipe with great flavoring. They have great grilled chicken pitas. You can put gyro meat on there with a salad. That's great. I can't wait to... Plus, they have breakfast all day, including Saturday and Sunday, and they have delicious beef ribs, hamburgers, and chicken gizzards. Okay, thanks, Dad. I have to get dressed. And for dessert, they have homemade banana pudding and peach cobbler, plus Hershey's ice cream, which you'll just love. Thank you, Dad. They customize also all their sandwiches with whatever toppings you want, and now they deliver within a three-mile radius. They're family-owned in Hillsboro. Mom! Jay's Chicken Shack is open seven days a week at 646 North Churton Street in Hillsboro. Call 919-732-3591 and ask about their catering services. Just as we were about to start a play again, Cedar Ridge went ahead and used its final timeout, so we're going to take another one here as you're listening to HillsboroughSports.com. Stay with us. A friendly welcome awaits one of the great public golf courses in North Carolina. Okanichi Golf Course is proud to be the home course for the Orange Panthers and the Cedar Ridge Red Wolves men's and women's golf teams. They're open to the public with memberships starting as low as $200. Okanichi is a locally owned third generation family business with some of the best champion Bermuda greens in the area. Visit okanichi.com for more information or you can call 919-732-3435 to schedule a lesson, purchase gift cards or learn more about tea times and come meet me at Okanichi. So after Orange uses a timeout, make that. That's Orange's first timeout. It'll be a third down situation here for the Panthers. And here comes Schmidt back to throw, looking deep down the middle. Going to launch it long down the field. It is overthrown. He was looking to go deep that time, looking for Morgan Pascal, who pumps his fist in frustration. And on that third down and 14 situation, it's going to lead to a punt, and this will be the first punt of the night here for Jackson Schmidt, who doubles as the punter along with his quarterback duties. Orange leading 28-3. Kevin Wright Jr. goes back to accept it, and we have more whistles as referee Travis Keith comes over. And Orange needs one more player. There's one player who... Apparently has blood on his uniform, so he has to go off the field. Another Panther comes on. Jordy Farrington will block on this punt attempt here from Jackson Schmidt, who takes a bit of a high snap. Rush was on, and Schmidt barely got it away. It was not a good punt. Now it barely got past midfield, and it rolls out of bounds into the orange sideline at the 45. So the punt, only good for 28. Cedar Ridge now with an opportunity to take advantage of quality field position. 
If nothing else, Cedar Ridge can say that they became only the third team this year to score against Orange in the first quarter. And we have a flag down against Orange for an illegal formation. Ball at the line of scrimmage. See what second year coach Scott Luce Moore likes to do here. He can make Orange re-kick it, and I think that's what he wants to do. He saw how close his block party came to the foot of Jackson Schmidt, and he's going to make Jackson re-punt this ball. With Orange up by 25 and 238 remaining, and what was about a three-quarter full grandstand to start this game is now slam full. We have a full house here tonight in the oldest town in the Triangle. The far side grandstand completely full and they are lined up from one end of the field to the other along the fence just to get a glimpse at this game. It is standing room only. Schmid now will punt standing at his own 14. The kick is away and this one's actually much better. Cedar Ridge is going to come out on the losing end of this. In fact, they wound up losing 10 yards of field position after that as the ball rolls dead at the 36. If they had just accepted the penalty before, it would have been at the 46. So Cedar Ridge rolling snake eyes there, and you can feel the frustration. This is the team that has not beaten Orange since 2011. Orange won that year in a two-point game that was a shootout. 47-45 was the final on that one here at Cedar Ridge. And ever since then, Orange has really controlled this rivalry. Ball would be at the Cedar Ridge 36. That's where Phil Berger, the quarterback, will have one back in the backfield with three wide receivers. Berger has struggled throwing the ball in this game. He's thrown two interceptions. One was returned for a touchdown. Berger now will roll out to the right with pressure cracking down on him. Launches it long. It's blocked by Stone Edwards and incomplete. Stone barely had to leave his feet. When Stone stretches his hands... I imagine that's about a nine-foot wingspan. He is 6'5", as he is, so it doesn't take very much to make that a very formidable task trying to throw over him when he's at point-blank range. Clock is stopped with 2.17 remaining. Orange leading 28-3. to And Stone was standing right in front of Berger that time and made it virtually impossible for him to get that pass off. Second and 10, and that makes it a very difficult task for that left side of the Cedar Ridge offensive line to try to block him. And really, Cedar Ridge is just the latest in a long line of opponents to learn that the hard way. Miles goes in motion. Berger will run the option, flips the Miles, who nearly lost it, and then he is bundled up and dropped in the backfield. Orange really had the fight taken to them early in this game, but there, Ryan Sellers came aboard along with Peyton Wilson, also getting up off the pile, Stone Edwards. And the loss is of two. Make it three-yard loss. So now it's third and 13. And the home fans that have been desperately waiting for something to cheer for and really started to feel that momentum was on the home team's side at the beginning of the second quarter have now been lulled into a dull whisper. Demetrius Lyles goes to the left, John Williams to the right. Have a shotgun. Here's Berger. He's going to take off to the left, throw on the run. Pass is caught by Baldwin at the 40, and he's knocked out of bounds. Referees say that he has knee touched inbounds. Now they change things up. So Baldwin, with the clock now stopped with a minute 19 remaining, makes the catch, but he's well shy of the first down. And I believe Orange called a timeout. So we'll take it with him here. Orange calls timeout, and you're listening to HillsboroughSports.com. Stay with us for more. Angie, your purse looks great. Where did you get it embroidered? Oh, thanks. My family got it for me at Happy Stitches in Hillsboro. It was a surprise for my birthday. It looks so professional. Does Happy Stitches do only purses? No, they monogram t-shirts, bags, stickers, coolers, beach bags, magnets, even Christmas ornaments. You name it, they do it. Perfect. With the holidays coming up, I've been looking for something for my Christmas tree. I'll visit Happy Stitches today. Happy Stitches, located in the Daniel Boone Village. Call Wendy Allison at 919 644 